the police federation will not be Muslim. I stand here today on a number of premises to remind the citizenry of Jamaica that the police federation will not be Muslim. Cannot be Muslim and will not be intimidated. When we spoke in confidence and in privacy about welfare and well-being, it is because we understand the reality that if you don't take care of the human resources, then naturally those who rely on the services will feel the pinch. I say this against the factor that notwithstanding the police federation continues to besiege our employer, the government, for resources and proper remuneration. They are continuing to be a piecemeal approach to national security. Why do I say this? Mocha for proper remuneration. Yet still, the police rank and file who police the largest aspect of our citizenry, welfare, continues to be ignored. The backdoor approach that is being taken and expecting a champagne. Residual effect, it cannot happen like that. When the police federation speaks of accountability, we know what we are speaking about. Our roles and responsibility entails investigation, unearthing intelligence, and ensuring that it is garnered into evidential values. So those who believe that they can send threat to the police federation about lawsuits, about their ineptness, incompetence, they can underscore today that we know what we are talking about because those funds that continue to be returned to central treasury coffers from the appropriation in aid proceeds, we know that it is happening. But yet still, our colleague, Constable Oliver Mullins, would have been alive today if the government of Jamaica had taken appropriate action to reduce us. What? They know this, that the environment has changed. They know that criminal elements have ramped up their artillery. But guess what? They continue to produce police officers and send us out, not even with the basic amenities, uniform, ballistic vests, ballistic shield. Come on, Jamaica. Come on, Jamaica. When our employer creates the mayhem, they should be held accountable. There is absolutely no space for any state of emergency because they know what they are doing when they are tying our hands, depriving us of the resources for policy in this country. So when I'm at my office, treating with the welfare, encouraging the membership to hold straight and underpinning that the citizens of this country matters most, and we, matters to to see persons who are accountable writing to me seeking public apology or retraction or else legal action back up. This chairman is not going to step down and to give any account to anybody who believes that they are delinquent in their roles and responsibilities and expect me to bow to them. No way I'd rather to die on the end of gallows for the people of Jamaica and the men and women that I serve. <laughs> Colleagues, Oliver Mullins served this country with pride, humility, and compassion. He touched lives. All we are simply saying to our employer, the government, provide us with the resources.
that we can stir response to do this call. Enough is enough. Every time we are in meetings, we are promised. We are promised monument and that it would be unveiled in the 60th year of our Jubilee. We are it is broken promises. We are promised that we will be properly remunerated. But yet still, we have our Minister of Finance behaving as if we are mendicants at the table. It will not happen under my watch. We are promised that we will have facilities, but yet still there is not a holistic approach being taken to ensure that the resources are pumped to national security. And then we stand at podium crying and behaving as if we don't know what we are doing. Enough is enough. We have been promised facilities, but yet still we have the incompetences and the ineptness where environmental impact assessment continues to delay projects that we are supposed to get facilities and aesthetics commensurate with the service, the risk associated with the profession, and it continues to be delayed, and nobody is held accountable. Enough is enough. <laughs> Colleagues, Jamaica, Jamaica, those in your ship, the hypocrisy that continues, it's unabated. The private sector organization, the mecca of this country, must underscore and seek to hold those who are elected accountable. I don't play politics. I pray for the lives and the well-being of our citizens and our colleagues. And it is time we underscore the importance of Jamaica Vision 2030. We cannot achieve this without the investment. Lip service pretty star will cut it. I am not going to be the one that is going to be promised any cabinet sector to hold down the truth and let the lies continue to be pervasive in our society. That won't happen under my watch. So colleagues, family, Alexis, Oliver, you will not be alone in this. You have several fathers and mothers within the constabulary force. We are going to stand for you, with you, in the time of adversity. The Federation will not become a part of you. That's our solemn commitment to you. And for those who continue to fight people and to play a game with you, let me say this. I reminded my colleagues at our central conferences that the PNP means police not promoted, and JLP means justice left police. So today, all I'm thinking to say is to the Jamaica must ensure that we hold those who we elect accountable and not to listen to lip service and pretty speeches. Put the resources of our tax dollar to work that we can at least see our children benefiting once and for all. My colleague, Oliver Money. You may have been cut short in your sojourn in service to the citizens of this country, but we acknowledge you even in death. And may your life continue to let light perpetually shine on 